going to be left behind, but the Lord's going to remove the precious fruit from the earth. All precious fruits going to be removed from the earth before his wrath falls, before his wrath comes upon the earth. That doesn't mean that the church isn't going to be here when the devil comes down onto the earth having great wrath. That's not God's wrath. That's the devil's wrath. There's a difference. But you, you take inventory, friend. Really, take inventory. Is there anything that's holding you back? Anything that's holding you down right now? Any weights? Any sin that's so easily besetting you? Is there any weights holding you down? Anything anchoring you down on this earth? Or are you ready to go? Because I would say most of God's people are being weighed down right now. They think they're ready for rapture. Oh, we're just waiting for the rapture. No, you're not. No, you're not. The majority of the church is going to stay right here through the first three and a half years of the tribulation hour. The wise virgins did not wake up till midnight. Midnight is the second watch. Jesus is not coming in the first watch. Luke chapter 12, Jesus says if he shall come in the second watch or the third watch. But he's not coming in the first watch. That doesn't mean there's not somebody watching. He's just not coming. Not coming in the middle of the air. He's not coming at all. Because the, those that are awake, watching and praying, are going to be caught up. Revelation 12. Caught up unto God into his throne. Amen? So if you think the only caught up there is in the Bible is there's only three places where those, that phrase is used and it's where Paul the Apostle is caught up to the third heaven and then the other places where the church is caught up in the middle of the air. But then there's another place in Revelation chapter 12 where the man-child is caught up unto God into his throne and that's the first fruit. You say, well, that man-child is Jesus. The book of Revelation is a book of prophecy. It can't be Jesus. And it also says that the overcomer is going to receive a rod of iron to rule the nations with a rod of iron. That's what the man-child receives, a rod of iron. You see, God has those that are his first fruits. But then the church is going to be left behind. See, the first fruits comes out of the barley. The church as a whole is the barley harvest, but the barley is going to be left behind. Listen, after the church is gone, John didn't say that, the, that God was going to gather his barley into his garner. He said he was going to gather his wheat. The wheat's the end of the world. It's when God sends forth the angels. Do you know why the wheat's got to go through the last three and a half years of the Great Tribulation? Because wheat has an outer hard, a hard, harding, an outer hardened shell, a thick hard shell. And when they do the winnowing, the barley only requires the wind to blow through it to separate the wheat from the chaff. But the but the wheat requires a beating. Are you listening? Now, the first fruits comes out of the barley, and it's an omer of, of barley that's, that is, it's an ephah or a or omer. It's a, it's a, I don't think it's an omer. I think it's the ephah. But anyway, it's just a small little uh, part, a portion that kicks off the harvest. See, the harvest can't even begin until the, the first fruits of the barley is taken in or offered up. In the Old Testament, the first fruits was a wave offering. And they would take, the high priest would take that first fruits out of the barley and he would offer it to God. 
And then the barley harvest would begin. That's in the spring. Did you know the wheat harvest doesn't take place until the summer? Jesus said, when you see these things, know that it's at the door. Summer is near. Well, something's going to happen way before summer. First fruits takes place in the spring. Amen? And I believe spiritually we're in that spring season. As Jesus said, when you begin to see these things coming to pass, look up for your redemption draws near. And that's where we are. The redemption of the purchased possession. So don't think that Babylon is just one location or one organization. It's not just the Catholic Church. More dangerous than the Catholic Roman Catholic Church is the charismatic movement that's come out of the Catholic Church called the Charismatic Renewal. The Benny Hins, the Kenneth Copelands, the Joyce Myers, all of them, they came out of the Catholic Church. That's all out of Rome. Uh, Paula White. Um, T.D. Jakes. All of that. All that charismatic mess. Joel Steen. Just recently, Joel Steen was with the Pope. That's the whore. It's that world church it's that world council of churches all the churches coming together becoming one the, that's the whore of babylon the one world church and we're seeing it we're seeing all the churches coming together right now to babylon confusion and not just the ones that call themselves protestants and call themselves uh, whatever. No, I'm talking about even the pagans. Even the, you know, Buddhists and all that. It's all coming together into one. And it's all about a collective consciousness. It's all about that third eye. Opening your third eye. And it's all about everybody becoming one. Well, Jesus said, Think not that I've come to send peace on earth. And, you know, I just heard at Joel Steen, I just heard them saying this. I was watching a video where they said this to the people. They said, peace on earth. Jesus didn't teach peace on earth. Amen? When the angels came when Jesus was born and they said goodwill and peace toward all men... It didn't say peace on earth as far as that there would be peace between all the different peoples of the earth and there'd be no war. No, it's peace when you accept peace of God in your heart. When you accept Jesus, then you have peace with God. Amen? And so if everybody on the earth received Jesus Christ, then there wouldn't be any war. If everybody accepted Jesus Christ and was saved and the blood of Jesus had washed away their sins and, hey, it would be heaven on earth. But not everybody accepts Jesus. I very rarely ever hear Joel Osteen mention the name of Jesus. And if he does, it's very, very shallow. Because, you know, you can't even name the name of Jesus. You can't name the name of Christ without the Spirit of God. And it's getting more and more difficult. Because Joel Osteen wants to be politically correct. He wants to open up the doors to the Buddhists, to the homosexual, to the... Uh, doesn't matter what you are. He wants you there. He wants you to come in. Feel welcome. Folks, that's Babylon. When you have a mixture of all the different spirits and all these different things all coming together, that's Babylon. That's confusion. And what does God say? He says, come out. Come out of her, my people. Amen? 
Praise God. Hallelujah. We won't be late the message, but I just felt the Lord wanted me to deal with this today. And I hope that you will take heed. I hope you will obey the truth. Be obedient to the truth. Amen? Because that's your only hope.